So as we're standing here at the Liberty Estate, you'd never think that a half acre is not enough, right? Especially with everything we're trying to fit into this lot. So as you think about the obstacles that come up with any build, you know, this seemed fairly easy on paper, you know, it's a developed neighborhood. Um, all the streets are in, curbs are in, sidewalks are in, you know, utilities and powers in. And so as a template, like most everything's there from a build perspective, but as you come in and you start building the house and the square footage and probably like many clients, I think it's pretty common that we went in like everybody else where you kind of have a goal of uh, the size of the home. And then as you start laying out kids' bedrooms and living and you know, the needs versus wants, which is very common, the house tends to grow bigger than you had expected and you have to scale that back. And so just as we had done for the last you know 11 years that I've had AFT with our clients, there's always this design and then we have to look at you know value engineering or scaling back or you know the house tends to grow faster uh, than we anticipated when we went into it. It was no different here. We kind of were that same demographic where there was the wish list and then the reality of of budget and lot size and you know setbacks and everything else we have to work with. Uh, but a couple obstacles that are really important. You know we. You know, as we were digging this, this was farmland previously. And so for us, it's a mandatory requirement for our clients. We do a soils report. And, and what ends up happening, there's some variation in the soils report, but typically we'll have an engineering company come out and they'll bore and they'll take these samples, core samples. Sometimes they go super deep. I mean, they could go up to 30 feet deep, but they'll come and do samples around the, the property to really get a good feel of the site conditions and whether the soils, you know, and they do testing, whether it's expansive soil or we have a lot of rock or clay, you know, what we call hard dig when we're di digging on a mountain. So as you look at that, it's really important to understand the soil type because that allows us from an engineering perspective to engineer the lot properly. And more importantly, when we work on excavation and grading, that if we have to over excavate, which means we're taking out native soil, we're taking dirt that's here and we're bringing in better soil that's less expansive. And so in this case, we had a, a, a certain amount of expectations of dirt that we were gonna dig down, over excavate, remove off the property, and then bring in clean soil. Problem is there are some areas that were not core sampled because we're not core sampling the full half acre here. And we had some dead zones. And what I mean by that, this was an old farm and it had to been used as fill. Uh, I don't wanna say a dump because it wasn't trash, but it was just soil that had been used and turned and, and was not really good soil. And we had a couple of spots here um, that were gonna be an issue. We had to actually dig more out. So we had some big, not big, but we had a couple decent holes here of dirt that we had to remove and bring in fresh soil. So that's one of those things that was not known and we had to work around that. So then that way, when we build the house and we're compacting and we're doing you know, the slab itself that we don't have any issues there. As I mentioned in a previous video with the retention basin here for the soccer field, you'll see that that's, uh, you know, I was, I'm six foot two, two and that's over my head. And so that went a lot deeper than we originally planned. And the reason being is that I mentioned that, you know, we looked at the water and we wanted anything flat. That was part of it. More importantly, here was the bigger factor. You'll see the swimming pool behind me here. And as we were looking at depth of trees that we're putting in, like in the planters here, and how those roots would, would take uh, into the ground and, and the depth that those grow over time. So as you're looking at the trees that would be installed, as you're looking at the pool plumbing, we had to make sure that those French drains are below all of that so that over time, we don't have an issue with, uh, you know, trees coming down into the plumbing system and that being a warranty issue later. And so because of that, we had to dig the trampoline basin and the retention basin deeper so that we could bring our site drainage even deeper and be plenty clear underground. The other big thing that was not planned is originally our, our plumbing was gonna come off the back for the pool and shoot around to the pool house. We're actually taking a longer jog. And the reason being is because again, we're gonna have some trees on this side and we didn't want the pool plumbing that you can see is fairly shallow. I mean, it's not tremendously deep by any trees. And so by running it in this tight area between the sport court and the pool house, now, we don't have any, um, we won't have any intersection between the plumbing and any greenery that were installed. And so again, even though we had things designed and this pool plumbing has totally changed from the original design, the depth of our retention basins has changed. The amount of soil that we've had to import into the project has changed. These things are moving targets, right? And it's really important despite we had so much planning and pre-construction for this project, 
But nonetheless, it's really important to think about all the details and hence the reason we're putting the, the swimming pool in now as is you think about lock configuration and where things are running, it's really important to compare and layer the landscape plan, the civil plan, the house itself, and understand the end use so that we can design properly and not have any issues from electrical and landscaping and plumbing and everything that's gonna be underground. So then that way, as we move forward and live in this home and maintain this home, it's gonna be uh, ideally somewhat maintenance free. We're not gonna have to worry about hassle in the future five to 10 years, you know, as everything grows in and becomes more lush.